this video, we're going to be talking about some strategies, principles to help you become better Madden players. If you guys want, I'm in the uh, Jets offensive playbook, and I am in the, I think, Chiefs, uh, but basically running dollar. You can get access to all of my ebooks by becoming a Patreon member. Links in the description. And I just dropped a massive update to my dollar defense with some really, really cool concepts that make it, I think, even better than it already was. Now, that being said, let's go ahead and get into this. And I want to talk about some schematic approaches and really just a uh, systematic approach in general today. So I really I'm trying to think how to word this in Madden. Sometimes I think one of the biggest mistakes that I make and one of the best biggest mistakes that anybody makes is you kind of overthink your overthink the game. So for example, he's showing man to man coverage, right? Probably two men under, but showing man to man coverage. The reason I know that is because the corner on the solo wide receiver side is lined up slightly to the inside of the player. So I'm anticipating man coverage. I get man coverage and I throw my man beating drag route. Now, the important, uh, the important thing to understand is really the if this then that of the game. That is how Madden will become systematic to you. Understanding the inputs that they can actually possibly do. So as you see right here, he's kind of showing man-to-man -man coverage again. So what we're going to run is a man-to-man, -man, uh, a man-to-man -man beating concept. Got to talking, so I'll take time out. But we'll show this to you again. So again, showing two men under, right? So what's the best way to beat two men under? Well, to split the safeties up the middle of the field, which forces the users. This is my favorite way to attack two men under in the game. Now, my first read here, I'm going to look to the right, not open, look back to my drag, it's open, had the wheel route late, but bottom line is, we just take what the defense gives us, and we keep moving the ball down the field. The important part about this is understanding there's only a, a there's there is a limit to what your opponent can actually do out of the look that they are giving you. And so, part of becoming, I think, really, really good as I totally missed my touchdown there. I was trying to throw it and then I thought he was using it. Part of becoming really, really good at Madden is understanding the if this, then that system that the game is truly built on. Now you see here, he checks into a zone coverage. So what I'm gonna do is put a zone beater here to the left side. If he is in zone, he actually stays in man, actually sends some heat out of this. And I should have juked inside and got the first down, but I didn't do that. Okay, so now, same thing, he's showing uh, this could potentially be cover two. So we're going to give him the same look, but we have some more zone beating routes on the field. And we still have man beating routes as well, as we have a corner route, a post, a drag. First read, we're going to look to the flat. You see that he drifts back. We'll just take what the defense gives us. Again, understanding if this, then that is so important, right? It really is. It is, in my opinion, the most important thing about offense in general. Because if you call good plays against good looks, you pretty much can't get stopped um, unless you stop yourself, right? Unless you miss the read, unless you're late on the read, right? So by calling good plays, you ensure that you are going to be in a position of strength. So here we have cover two man. I'm going to run a C route to the left side. And the purpose of the C route is to pull the safety. So what you're going to see here is we have this corner route, and then we're going to do a little double corner with a trail concept over the middle of the field. So if he runs man-to-man -man coverage, we have this corner to the right side. We also have the C route to the left. Super hard to guard that in man coverage this year. As you see, we're able to consistently attack the defense. Stopping for just a second and understanding what are they probably going to do will automatically make you a better Madden player, in my opinion. Here we're going to go to wide trail. We're going to run a little different setup. Another thing that he's doing is notice that he's not pressing on the right side. So what that does is if you don't press corner routes, oftentimes, they, especially from compression, it's a little easier for them to get open, in my opinion, this year. So that's another little factor. But let's say he was to, you know, kind of maybe like switch it up a little bit and go to zone coverage out of a man-to-man -man coverage look. The combos we're putting on the field are still really effects. Like, see here, it's kind of a cover two look to the right. So we know that that cloud flat is going to play this short corner. So we're going to put a deeper corner in behind it. Now we are a little close 
um, in my opinion, to the red zone. So we'll have to kind of, you know, monitor that as well. And we're going to have a backside check down here. But if you look here to the right side, we're really reading the corner. So we see he drifts back like he's in a third. That means we're going to be able to throw that short corner. I made a mistake on my free form, and that's why it was incomplete. Understanding why something is the way it is is, all, is so important in Madden, in my opinion, for getting better. So you see here, why do we go to the bubble screen there? Well, really just because there's a couple of very specific things you have to do to stop that screen. You have to have maybe a base alignment. You have to have um, maybe a cloud flat, maybe a man up, certain things like, like that. He was showing his own coverage. And last play, he was in cover three. And we know that cover three is going to struggle to stop the read bubble if he's not manning that bubble screen up, right? Okay, so we're going to take the same kind of thing that we just talked about in terms of the if this, then that approach. And we're going to apply that principle to defense because I think one of the mistakes that I make a lot and I think a lot of people make a lot is really over adjusting to your opponent okay so here what we're going to do is we're going to run kind of just a basic defense to start pinch D line crash line down one of my favorite defenses now he's going to come out here and run the ball every single play so it's a little bit of a different a little bit of a different approach that we're going to have to take to stopping him. This is why I actually run this defense now. 3-4 odd is a, is a pretty good run defense. So when you play somebody like this, the biggest thing here, and this is a, a, a really good principle for defense, no matter what season of Madden you're playing, when you play someone like this that wants to just run the ball every play and kind of just Mickey Mouse their way up and down the field, you want to, it's really easy, uh, in my opinion, it's really easy to become like super frustrated and try to basically force them to pass or whatever, uh, try to force them out of it. And you want to be patient because people like this will always beat themselves. So like here, he has a bubble screen threat to the left, so we want to man that up. But we're going to play pretty bend but don't break defense. There you see, beats himself, now he's incomplete. And all we're really trying to do is get these kind of guys on a third down so we can actually run our defense. But when you play somebody like this, again, like I said, it's really, really important that you just don't beat yourself. If you just don't beat yourself, oftentimes um, you will you will come out on top. So that's why I like 3-4 odd because 3-4 odd is just going to force them to have to actually pass. And then when they have to actually pass – Oftentimes, they're not able to pass generally, and so that's kind of the idea here. So you see, and we still are basically running dollar. That The cool part about 3-4 odd, and even nickel 3-3 three, three to a degree, it's really just like dollar, if you think about it. It's just out of a different formation, right? So now, he's on the third down and 10. It's an obvious passing down. So what I like to do is really just run this basic, whoops, I apologize. Or, oh, no, I'm going to have to go off sides. I'm going to have to go off sides. Let me go off sides. Thank you. Okay. So what I like to do is I like to put the free safety zone blitz in my audibles so that when I audible to it, there's no tell, right? You, you, it doesn't, there's no uh, pre-snap tell. Now, the other thing is by just playing this defense right here, you give yourself a chance to stop. There's a very specific way that they actually have to beat that coverage. And that way is they have to be able to fit the ball in tight windows on the sideline, they have to throw the ball um, into KOs. So what I like to do is when I'm playing a game of Madden, we're just going to sit here and basically do um, do do what I just showed you. So we're going to send that four-man pressure. We're going to have that defense. We know that's the only opening right there. But again, he has to throw into deep out zone KOs. If he doesn't have good route combos on the field, he's going to get backed. And he's already out of here. So again, that's how simple it can be. We're going to get into another game. We'll talk a little bit more. All right, so we're into the second game, and I want to talk a little bit more about the if this, then that of Madden. Of course, he comes out here in onside kicking, but basically here's the idea. As a Madden player, oftentimes we chalk things up to randomness, and while there is a certain degree of randomness in the game, the easiest way to eliminate randomness, in my opinion, is to control as many variables as possible and to isolate as few 
players or for lack of a better word, other isolate as few variables as possible, right? So to try to only change one or two little things at a time, as opposed to trying to change everything in the time, right? So here we have this, he has a, off, uh, a backed off corner on the left side, really not showing any threat of pressure. So what we're looking for here is that slot. He actually goes with a kind of a double Mabel. I had the R1 wide open, but for whatever reason, I got absolutely shedded. <laughs> um, control the variables, super, super important, right? You want to really be, this is something that I'm trying to do better myself. You wanna be as specific as possible. So in my progression here, so you see here, R1, get a nice pass lead over the top. And as you see, off the bat, able to beat double Mabel coverage. So as this game plays out, as I'm playing this guy, I'm saying, okay, his basic coverage is a double Mabel coverage. And so there's only so many things that you can do out of a double Mabel defense. You can man up some people, but in general, the core structure of the double Mabel coverage is to have a deep flat, a short flat, a half over the top, right? A lot of cover too. So as I put together uh, an approach to attack this him, it's going to be a lot of, you know, either deep corner routes, like what you just saw, cover two beaters, or he's going to start to um, have to play more cover three, cover four, which is then going to open up our play Durham and stuff like that. So that's what I'm trying to get at here is you don't have to, like you, you don't have to change for the sake of change. And I think a lot of Madden players, um, the more Madden I watch in general, and this applies to any level of Madden. It's not just beginners. It's not just for pro players. In my opinion, this is for literally everybody. This applies to everyone that I've ever seen play Madden. They have to control, uh, they, they don't understand. And, and some people do this better than others as I get absolutely shamed on the first play here. Controlling the variables is so important because if you're, it, it's easy to come overwhelmed if you're trying to figure out what every single individual player is doing on the field in terms of reading the defense or on offense, or if you're playing defense, if you're trying to stop every single route that is possible, right? So you want to try to identify what is their main strategy that they want to do. So what is their main thing that they're trying to hang their hat on on defense? What is their main thing they're trying to hang their hat on on offense? And how can we force them to have to go to something else? And then what would be open if they did that, right? That is uh, kind of the key questions. So another thing that's super open against double Mabel coverage, especially the way he's going to play it, is this RPO. So that's another way that, again, we can kind of do the same thing. We're forcing him to have to adjust really to the bunch side of the formation, because a hard flat, it's not going to do enough for him, right? So here, RPO again. See how they go inside? Boom. And able to get out and get some easy yardage. Now, another thing that you can do, especially like against a formation like a nickel 3-3, well, we know that he only has, he has five potential zone defenders to the left. And he really only has four potential or three potential zone defenders to the right. So who am I reading right here? Well, I'm really looking to that corner on the right to see if he backs up or if he squats. You see there, it's going to be a cloud. So we're going to throw this right over the top, juke inside, and we're able to score. So as you see, we're isolating like specific defenders based off the specific information that we gathered on our first drive. And we're saying, okay, and it makes the game easier. And if you make the game easier, you will make your uh, your game faster. To me, that is a really, really big point. So by controlling the variables, by controlling the, um, well, let's say like the change, by controlling the change, we and, and by isolating specific things, then you're able to really play faster. It, it results in you being able to play faster, you being able to execute better, and it really just makes the game a lot more simple than you might think that it actually is, right? So here, he's going to try to throw this RPO. So again, 
we're just gonna take that away. So just a simple thing right here, just that simple adjustment of moving the linebacker outside and manning him up is going to at least force him to have to realize I cannot throw the RPO, right? So here now, he's having to actually make reads. He's having to actually make decisions. That's what we want to force them to have to do. That, that in of itself is, in my opinion, one of the biggest keys to playing good defense, where no matter who you play. I don't care if you're playing the best Madden players in the world or if you're playing a, beginning, a beginner Madden player. You have to force them. You have to take something away. You have to take something away. It's so like right here. This is a pretty basic defense, right? What does it take away? It takes away the snap throw to R, R to triangle. We're going to heat him up with some pressure, see if he's blocking the blitz. Even the, even the basic, um, what a lot of people don't understand. I'm going to call timeout right here. I want to get a stop. What a lot of people don't understand about defense is even just running like a basic defense. It is designed, if you're, if you're running it right, it's designed to take certain things away. Right, so like, what's this designed uh, to take away here? Well, it's designed to take away the corner to the right. It's designed to force a, a delay on the read over the middle, and then our user is also free to basically lurk the tight end if he goes to the middle of the field. So it's designed to take away specific things. Again, isolating. So you have to ask yourself that secondary question: If they beat my defense, what is the weakness? Right? If they're able to actually beat it then what is the primary weakness? So you know how to fix the problems. That is the core of, of good defense, in my opinion, is understanding every defense has a weakness. And in my opinion, every route combination has a weakness, right? Or there is a way to pretty much stop every route combination. Every formation, every offensive formation has a weakness, a, an inherent, uh, in my opinion, weakness. So, how do we isolate what that formation is weak at and take advantage of it for our purposes? So here are three, four odds. So what am I doing? I'm looking at the corner on the right. If he sits, I'm handing the ball off. If the corner backs up or goes to the inside, then I'll probably throw the RPO. See how he sits right there? And we're just trying to pound it in with Terrell Davis. Really, really nice play. So again, there's a read on everything. And that is, uh, again, mastering the if this, then that in Madden and controlling the variables will automatically make the game faster and make you a better Madden player. Thanks for watching the video. If you want to check out the ebooks, links in the description.